I got love for you, man. You know what, I'm what are we talking about? You know, I'm not here to start any trouble. I'm only going to say nice things about you from now on. I think you're handsome, and I think you're a wonderful host. I'm fat and I'm overweight. Just don't say anything silly. I was waiting for you to say that. I'm not laughing about it. You think this is funny? I take this serious. You know, I don't want y'all to take anything that, out of context that I'm saying. He's very funny. He likes to joke around a lot. As a personality and as an entertainer, yes. This is going to be really quick. I'm not taking any questions. Go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to talk for a little bit. You're listening to Cabby Presents, the podcast. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the show. Thank you very much for listening. I'm a little under the weather, uh, so my apologies for the sound of my voice. It's, it's probably going to be more annoying uh, than usual. I'm sad to see the summer go. But I'm excited for playoff baseball, the heart of the football season, fall TV shows, and fall fashions. Now, fellas, I just recently learned, okay? And this is like, for women, the color of the fall is plum. Okay, plum is kind of maroonish. But if you say plum, you get bonus marks. Don't ask me how I know this. I just know this. So when you see a woman with something kind of maroonish, whether it's a top or pants or, or shoes, or just, hey, I like, your, I like your, your choice of the plum. I'm telling you, it works. It works for me. So it can work for you. Just again, don't ask me how I know this. I just know. So last week in Toronto, I participated in this charity event called Rally Car uh, for Kids. And it's like, a, it's like a giant scavenger hunt across the city. It, uh, it raises money for the Sick Kids Hospital. I think last year it raised $3 million. This year it was like $2.7 million. Uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's, an, it's like a two-day event. It's awesome. Um, and there's a draft. So teams that raise money to be in this competition, the more money you raise, the higher draft pick you get. So they draft these celebrities. So at the after party... Uh, I met an actor who I've been a fan of since the movie 40 Year Old Virgin. And every scene that he was in, he stole from Seth Rogen and Steve Carell. And I'm happy that he's able to join me on the phone right now. If it's going to be uh, an interview, I'm going to conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions, ask myself the questions, then give y'all the answers. Hailing from Brooklyn, New York, by way of Trinidad and Tobago, last seen in the movie Think Like a Man with Kevin Hart and a bunch of other talented, Michael Lealy in his green eyes, Taraji P. Henson, a bunch of actors. I think he was, he had the pleasure of acting with uh, Megan Good, which is awesome. Uh, And the TV show Weeds, an extremely funny comedic actor. It is my pleasure to welcome Romney Malco, to Cabby Presents. How you doing, man? I'm good, dude. I'm, I'm real good. Just, uh, you could have made it a lot easier for your listeners if you'd have just said the funny black guy, you know? Yeah, but no, but I don't, <laughs> under- <laughs> I don't want to say that, though. We don't have to just, you're not just a funny black You are a funny black guy, but, you know, not. No, no, I get it. Totally. I'm good, man. Things are good, man. I, I, you know, I felt lucky. I got to meet you out there when we were doing the thing for sick kids and you know, I'm still recovering from that weekend. So yeah, that but, was that was that was a great weekend. So wait, you um, did you just go see Jay Z? Tell me that yeah. story, please. Yes, I did. Um, you know, just it was like a unique experience opening up the Barclays Center. I happen to live like within walking distance. Oh, really? And, yeah, you know, and like, you know, to be honest, if I could really just be real, I really didn't catch on to Jay Z until after the fact. And when I say after the fact, I'm thinking, like, uh, maybe, like, bl- Blueprint. I was like, damn, this dude is really kind of tight. Okay. And then I, I went back, and Reasonable Doubt is what hooked me. I was like, suddenly I could appreciate it like I couldn't before. So I can't take credit for being, like, one of the, you know, the people who caught Jay-Z in his pioneer days. I ended up having to go back and be like, oh, you know, I, I'm, I like lyrics. And um, that's how he got me. So... Anyway, long and short of it is, I had seen Watch the Throne, and, um, you know, in Watch the Throne, you got some of Jay-Z, you got some of Kanye, and then you got some of them both, and whenever you got some of Jay-Z and Watch the Throne, you wanted more of him, and whenever you got some of Kanye and Watch the Throne, you wanted more of him. So this was kind of like 
boom, now I got the Jay-Z fix. Next is to catch Kanye. <clears throat> but, yeah, it was really nice, man. It was an amazing light show. And it's like one of those shows where you really had to pay attention. They had all this imagery. First of all, the center is ridiculous. That center is beautiful. But, but you, you know, there's all this imagery in the background that was going you know, against these walls. And, um, like, he had Basquiat and, like, all these images that oh, are just okay. kind of synonymous with, 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 with New York. It was a vibe. It was just a unique vibe and experience. Yeah. Who did he bring on stage? Do you do you remember any of his guests? Um, well, the only person that I saw him bring on stage was um, Memphis Bleak. But I heard the night before he had Rihanna. <clears throat> yeah. That's oh, that's that's pretty dope. So you so you live in Brooklyn. You said just uh, like you're within walking walking distance of the Barclays Center. What is like how long? Like, have you seen this transformation of Brooklyn? I know it's, you know, I maybe I think it was what like eight or nine years ago was starting to become more gentrified. But like, have you have you noticed it? Dude, I was born here. I was born like, I don't know, like a mile and a half from here. Hell, I was born in a county hospital, and like I left here when I was I don't know twelve, thirteen years old, and here I am, damn near thirty years later, back in Brooklyn, and it's you know all my friends were calling me like. Oh, man, you know, did they make fun of me because of the fact that I don't like to eat gluten or, you know, this or that? <laughs> so I come back to Brooklyn. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm not Hollywood. No, no, dude. I'm just Brooklyn. Right, <laughs> Cause, yeah, yeah. Because everything in Brooklyn is gluten-free and, you know, it's, it's really dope. And, and, like, I do remember this about this neighborhood. I remember my dad used to put the top on the Cadillac up when he came through here. Oh, oh so, well, it's a, yeah, it was a different era back then. Exactly. I live on Myrtle. I live on Vanderbilt and Myrtle. And like Myrtle is uh, what used to be called back when I lived, it was called Murder, Murder Boulevard. Now it's all like now it's like Myrtle. like baby carriages and and lap golden retrievers. And oh, my it's, God, it, 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 what is it, it look like Beverly Hills now, like in, in the nah, city? Nah. Not quite. Still got that Brooklyn thing because, you know, we got that we got that old architecture. And, you know, here's what's dope about my neighborhood in particular. Here's what I love about you know, is that the people still own the property. So we haven't had, like, the major corporations come in and take over. In fact, you know, not knocking it or nothing, but I don't even, um, I, I don't even, I don't even think that there's a, a, a Starbucks in this neighborhood. Really? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, wow. at, least not, at least not yet, not yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, the, the the people who own the property here, like Dominican Republicans and Irish dudes from back in the day, and yeah. you know what I mean. So anyway, that's got to be like a like a really vibrant and just colorful neighborhood. I mean, it's much like like Toronto, uh, and I know you spent time here shooting the movie Love Guru. Um, yeah. they, and so you must just get like cuisine from like everywhere on earth in this in the neighborhood. That's hilarious. Area, right? Dude, I eat Aki and sawfish in the morning. As soon as I step out of my crib, I get my Aki and sawfish. And yes, I tweet, sir. I tweet a picture of it. I'm like, boom, <laughs> okay. This is me eating Aki and sawfish this morning, fools. And then I go from there to having Middle Eastern, usually around lunch. And then I go from there to having South African <clears throat> right around dinner. Oh, that's awesome. That's and awesome. And that's all the time. It's like there's so many. It's, it's such a friggin' mashup of, like, sexy and style. And it's like an art mecca, like... Literally, dude, I've seen, I mean, Talib, I've seen Most Def, I've seen Torre, I've seen, I mean, it, it don't stop. I've seen so many people here um, and that right. are in the game or that, you know, that are artists that I respect. It's nice. It's almost like, it's like the sweet spot. Give me one second. I'm sorry, I'm multitasking. No worries, no I worries. I know I should be focused. Don't worry, it's all good. I'll just do. I'll just start. Uh, just do some talking. No, uh, no. You, yeah, go ahead, please. No. So when you um, so I'm on the phone with uh, Romney Malco, who uh, was uh, you know, in in forty year old kind of blew up after forty year old virgin. Uh, you shot a movie, The Love Guru, here in Toronto, uh, oh, yeah. and you're talking about your neighborhood being very colorful and and uh, vibrant, and there's all kinds of cuisine and stuff. Did you get, like, when you were here shooting that movie in Toronto, The Love Guru with Mike Myers and Justin Timberlake, did you get a sense of that, of that's what Toronto was like, too? Like, did you get a chance to kind of, like, see the different areas and eat the different types of food that we offer here? Dude, I had, look, let me me tell you something about Toronto. I had a one-month minimum, about a a one-and-a-half-month debate with my brother 
of whether I was moving to Toronto or New York. Are you serious? Yes. Listen, let me explain. I'm, see, let me preface. I'm an, entrep- I'm an entrepreneur by, by, tr- by heart. So people are always like, oh, I love doing this movie. I love doing this movie. I appreciate that. But the truth is in my heart is that I'll never really be completely satisfied until I'm an entrepreneur in the space that I'm in. You know what I mean? Okay. Because as an actor, no matter how prestigious it looks, at the end of the day, you are just an employee. I've never been an employee. That's just not my seat. I haven't been an employee since 1989, but technically I'm still an employee because I'm an actor, even though I have, you know, the way that acting is set up, you can feel like an entrepreneur, but at the end of the day, I'm waiting for someone to hire me. Right. So part of my moving to New York or moving to Toronto was to be basically to get away from Los Angeles and the distractions within it. You know, when you live there and you're an actor and you have a successful movie out or a successful show out, everybody wants you to come to this, join this, be at this party, do this. And you know what? You get guilt tripped into a lot of it. Hmm. And it's just not my, it's not my thing. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not the smoozing type. So I was trying to decide whether or not I want to be in Brooklyn or whether or not I want to be in Toronto. And my brother is the one who actually helped me decide to move to Brooklyn simply because of the fact that it was, it was where it all started. Wow. So but you get so, so, okay, so, okay. So Toronto, so to answer your question, Toronto is one of my favorite cities in the world. I've lived in Paris. I've lived in the Slovak Republic. I have wow. lived in London. I spent expensive time in Japan. I've lived on both coasts of Canada. I've lived in Texas. I've lived in the Caribbean. Toronto is like one of my favorite places in the world. How did you, what made you fall in love with the city? What was, um, her, what was her name? Um, no, no, no. I'll tell you what made me fall in love with the, oh, her name was Tolerance. That was her name. <laughs> tolerance. We got a lot of tolerance here. Oh, uh, to, it has genuine tolerance. Like I lived in LA for, for 22 years and I can tell you this about LA, which is that it's, it's a very culturally diversified place, but it's also the most segregated place I've ever lived in my life. Hmm. Yeah. And so it's different in Toronto because it's culturally diversified, but there is a tolerance, there is an acceptance. And that right there is, oh, is one thing. But the fact that I can walk down the street and get the best chicken shawarma in the world. Yes, sir. I'm like, <laughs> and then or I could stop and tell it at the Jamaican spot and get like real fish soup. Yeah, stop. man. Yeah, stop. man. That's amazing. You know, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, dude. Come on, man. Uh, so, so when you were when you were here shooting the the Love Guru Ram, um, what was uh, like? Did you uh, you know when they offered you the movie? Did you did you did they offer you the movie or did you have to go read for the movie? Um, they offered. Well, no. You know what? It, um, to be quite frank, that movie required me to audition. But basically, it was this. They had offered me the movie, Mike Myers did, but the studio wanted to hire another actor. It's this one actor. Me and him are always, it's either me or him, always, right? The same, I'm not you, say his name. No, you can say his name. Dude, I'm sure, no, no, dude. but you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not saying no, no, you have no, no, any no, kind no. of animosity towards, towards the dude. That's just the guy that they always put you no, up but against. you know, like, it can all, it can easily be misinterpreted as, they could be misinterpreted as, oh, you know, Romney's comparing himself. It's not that, or... You know, oh, Romney got this job over that guy. Let's just say that in the in the bigger scheme of things, that guy is a hell of a lot more famous than me, and has you know has tons of hit movies. But he does a broader style of comedy than me. You know what I mean? Are you talking and about Will so, Smith? Um, no. And so, okay. <laughs> nice try though. And so anyway, my my point is basically being is that my point basically being is that. Uh, Mike Myers wanted to hire me, but the studio thought it would be more financially beneficial to hire the other person. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Okay, so now when when Mike's like, "Hey, man, I want you to do this movie. I'm doing this movie." Uh, did he then? Then did, was his first question, uh, "Do you know how to ice skate?" Um, uh, you know what? They were like, "No." They were like, "Dude, you don't have to learn how to ice skate. This is not. This is okay. This is this is really." They're like, it's a love story. It's not a hockey movie. You know, that kind of thing. Blah, 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 blah. So you, so the, so your answer was, no, I don't know how to skate, but since exactly. it's the movies, we'll, just, like, we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. Like, we'll pull you around on a rug or something. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Did, is that actually what happened? Um, no. Actually, what happened was, um, you know me. I think you, you, you spent enough time with me to notice about me. I instantly started training and like, not not bragging or nothing. I'm not sitting there pretending to be the greatest, you know, hockey player in the world. Um, but I started going really hard for about six weeks, 
seven to anywhere between seven and twelve hours a day. It just depended on how long my trainer was willing to go. Really? And started learning hockey as a lefty because it felt more natural to me. And like by day four, I got my crossovers really strong going to my left, but really weak going to my right. And this dude comes up to me and he goes, "Yo," he says, "Yo." Um, you got to be patient with yourself. Don't get upset with yourself. It takes a little bit of time. Took me about six months to get my crossovers. How long have you been skating? I said, this today will be my fourth day. <laughs> and he was like, unbelievable. nah, for real, that's funny. How long have you been skating? And I was like, T-, and my trainer was like, today's his fourth day. And the dude goes, it, takes me, it took me six months to get my crossovers. I literally, I literally just skated away from that dude and requested that we, we started practicing in a private gym, in a, in a private rink. And the reason was because I didn't want to hear what the limitations were because then you put these things in my mind and I'd suddenly be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Be, be locking myself into that. Sorry that I'm so long-winded. No, no, that's point. cool. That's that's cool. Like, yeah. you picked up hockey. Pre- and hockey is a very difficult sport to pick up. I mean, it's not like the other sports where you're basically just on, I mean, you're on your feet, you're running or you're jumping. I mean, hockey, you have to learn how to skate, which is like... A, a- Exactly. The, the skill set is, is ridiculous. And then, and then on top of that, when I, get to, when I get to Toronto, they don't have no brothers that are lefty that play hockey that are good enough for the movie. So now they, they go, we got to use this dude, and they, it's just, they use this brother, um, and he's righty, and I have to switch. So this is the first time in movie history where, where the actor got to switch wow. for the stand-in. Yeah, right? yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> So, so how was it? Uh, how challenging was it to play the other way, or not play, but like shoot the other way? Uh, you know what? It, 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 it was because of the fact that I didn't have to do like super intricate stuff. It wasn't really that bad. And now, when I play, I, I some days I do righty, some days I do lefty. Do you understand how big of a deal the Toronto Maple Leafs are in this country? Dude, let me tell you something. I'm not. I'm not gonna call no names. I'm not gonna say nothing. But no, I say got, names, Rom. No, no, no. Romney, say, say names. I'm just gonna say that. You guys have a built-in loyal fan base over there, and certain people that are in charge of that kind of kind of contribute to the issue. And the issue to me is is that, like, in this weird way, if the money's already coming, you don't have to work any harder. You get what right. I'm saying? One hundred percent. Everybody who lives in this city and roots for that hockey team knows exactly that sentiment. You know, I'm like, and then and then so in this weird way, like when I would when I went to games. Like the first, I feel like the first 10, 15 rows of the stadium, it, it felt like the first 10, 15 rows, it didn't feel like hockey fans. It right. Felt like, it felt like people, people taking clients. <laughs> people, it felt like people with money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, like, okay, so um, you, uh, a friend of mine, and I, I don't know if I, I, maybe I did mention this. A, a really good friend of mine plays hockey for wait, wait so they, wait those Leaf games were those like the first hockey games that you'd ever attended you've ever attended um those were actually I mean you know when I was you know young me and my dad would, when I was living in New York as a kid me and my dad would watch hockey but yeah there was the first that was the first time I'd ever really attended a hockey game was there and I mean have you gone since huh have you gone back to watch a hockey oh, yeah. game since oh yeah oh yeah 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 like you know I mean when I was in LA I was going to Kings games all the time and, um, you know, and ever since now I'm getting in, you know, I just got to New York, but now I'm getting invites to go to all the, you know, games out here as well. So so a friend a friend of mine plays on the L.A. Kings. His name is Mike Richards. And I, I think when we met, um, I was probably, you know, breathing hot breath in your face. And I was uh, telling you about, um, since you have this, I, I must have seen, what, like 40 pictures of you? Hold with on, all hold these on. Di- let me stop you. Let me stop you, dude. Let me stop you, man. Okay. I gotta be real. I thought you was trying to kiss me when I first met you, man. <laughs> and you know, you just gonna be you just a, confirmed a lot of things for a lot of people. Yeah, there's a document that's gonna be coming to your house. <laughs> Dis- disregard it. Disregard it. It'll say something about restraining order. Disregard it. Okay. I'm gonna rip it up on site as soon as I say <laughs> Department of Justice or whatever, or U.S. Department of Justice. Yeah, I'm just. Boom! It's gonna get uh, shredded. So um, I must have like, seen, I must have looked at like forty pictures on your phone of you and these different fish, and my the only dude that I know is who was as big of a of a of a fish uh, fisherman or a avid fish fanatic or whatever I, or I don't even know what to call you guys uh, is my friend Mike Richards who plays on the L.A. Kings. How the bleep did you get into fishing? Um, you know, once again, West Indian heritage. That right. was something that was big with my dad. Yeah, but dad. we, we eat like, fish. We don't necessarily it, fish. You know, 
you know, my 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 dad is from the south, right? My dad is from like like the Ciparia, which is like the, the you know the, the southern part of Trinidad. People down there they fish, they hunt. I, I used to, you know, it was, it was the one place in my life where like me and my dad could really bond. We never saw eye to eye on much else, but hunting and fishing I was really good at, and so you know I did it as long as you know as long as I was a kid. And then I kind of let go of it for a really long time. And then somewhere down the line, like I say, a really long time, maybe like from, you know, I don't know, from like about 18 to, I don't know, 25, 26. And then somewhere down the line, it just hit me. It was like, hey, hold up, dog. This is your livelihood. This is, this is what you grew up doing. I started doing it again. And, you know, of course, you know, having more money and being able to, 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 to do it differently, I started taking trips to places like Brazil and just experiencing more exotic fishing trips. Wow. And then that, that just enhanced the experience altogether. But it doesn't have to be that. I go fishing under a bridge, man. Pretty much if there's, anywhere, <laughs> if there's water, if there's water and you can pee in it, I'll pop and fish it. <laughs> now, wait, can you fish in Los Angeles? Man, I used to go fishing in California all the time. I lived in Redondo Beach and like, as the, as the game has evolved, I've evolved, like, you know, there are certain things that I got, like, I would go out on fishing boats in California, because, you know, the Pacific's, you know, pretty decent fishery in itself, but we have a lot of lakes out there as well, and I'd go fishing out there, but, you know, seeing people on those boats, man, throwing burger wrappers into the ocean, and really oil leaking out the back of the boat, and people throwing cigarette butts, I just stopped. I was like, I can't do that no more. And I started fishing from a kayak. And what I like about it is, it's like, you can't get out in a kayak, right, and, like, dominate the ocean ever in no. any kind of way. Like, <laughs> no. you keep, if you're going to keep any fish whatsoever, you're going to keep what you can fit on that damn boat. Because if you got fish hanging out that boat, you're probably going to become a fish. You're going to get eaten <laughs> by something bigger. And, and then, you know, and then, but anyway, yeah, yeah. So I go fishing all over California. I have been, for, you know, I have been forever, really. Okay, well then maybe I could set it up. So I'm on the phone with, with Romney Malco, who's an avid fisherman, and my friend Mike Richards, who plays for the LA Kings, is also an avid fisherman. So we should, I should try to set it up, whether we do a fishing thing in California, or since you're here, well, you're in the East, you're in Brooklyn, he lives in a small town um, out just, well, it's about two hours away from Winnipeg, Manitoba. But yeah. where he lives is a, an area called um, uh, Lake of the Woods. And yeah. there are like hundreds of lakes. And he, he has shown me, like, I don't know if he's quite, I don't think he's caught a fish quite as big as some of the ones that you have, but it, from, from my memory, but I'm sure Mike could probably tell you differently. I just haven't seen all the fish that he's caught, obviously. But I'm sure you guys would get along because you guys have that in common. And I'm sure, you know, I, I know nothing about fishing. All I know is I like to eat salmon, and black cod is legit when I go to sushi places. That's what I order because it's friggin' delicious. Um, yeah. But, but I'm sure well, you guys could get along if we, get, if we did a, a, a fishing bit. No, nah, I'd love to come out there. That sounds just beautiful. I, you I would, would come up here? Yeah, I would tell you. I mean, look, anytime I, first of all, anytime I can even come back to Toronto, I'm always down. I don't hesitate about that. I, I really love it out there, man. Awesome. And, and yeah, and, and it just sounds beautiful. It just sounds like, you know. Sounds like Lake Haven. Okay, well, listen, I'm going to set it up, and he's got a pretty dope spot. Like, this kid, this, like, I did, like, a, kind of, a, like, a Cribs episode at his at his place, yeah. and, like, the, the, the one part about his place, which is just, like, ridiculous, is the cabana. My dude has a cabana on his, on his, um, on his dock, which, yeah. like, which, like, seats, like, eight to ten. We filled it, and it's been awesome. Dude, that's so dope. You know, you know. You know, man, one thing I will tell you about being from the islands and, 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 like, having humble beginnings, like, it never really crosses my mind to, like, get a cabana or to, or to you know, <laughs> it, just, it just doesn't, like, people have to bring it to my attention. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, I should get one of those. I like that. You know? Yeah, when you That's see it, when you see it, Rob, you'll be like, wow, this is pretty badass. Yeah, man. I, I wonder if I could fit a cabana on my bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a... If you if you if you buy a bike from Shaquille O'Neal, there's a chance that you could uh, fit uh, oh, you a said, cabana. Oh, you thought I said motorcycle? <laughs> <laughs> no, I. I oh, are you one of those bicycle. dudes that ride bikes in 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 New York? Are you one of those dudes? Yeah, yeah. It, it, to me, nothing else makes sense. Nothing. Well, in that city, yeah. I mean, the, you guys are so dense and just it's just cabs, taxis everywhere, and parking is like parking is insane there. It really 
is. And, like, you know, I live right around the corner from a park so I can take my dog there all the time. And it, what's funny is, though, like, I meet girls all the time who be like, you don't, you don't have a car? <laughs> right. No. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't think you need a car in New York, but it really it, it does bother some women out here when a brother don't have a car. I'm like, just get on the handlebars. Just don't, don't, <laughs> Let's don't take it back to 87. Light. Don't block the light. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's, it's illegal to, to not have a headlight in New York, but yeah, I'm like. Hey, so what, what, what uh, okay, you mentioned you have a dog. What, um, what attracts ladies more than, or actually, is there anything that attracts women more than having a dog? I mean, you know. I mean, just because the bike, you don't really, you can't really have swag on a bike. No, you can't have swag on a bike. But, but I do get a lot of people being like, "Yo, that's a dude from Weed. He on a bike," and then they give me props for it. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, I get that. I get props for being on a bike sometimes. But hey. I, I, the only thing I can think that are probably, seriously speaking, that are probably um, attract more women than a dog is a really good long sturdy fishing pole right you know? yeah a woman wants to know that the man can provide right right you know and so, he has the right tools know. exactly absolutely you, you know that. yeah that or a cabana could you imagine yeah if he just Walking yeah through New York with a cabana <laughs> we're like where you get that like uh well why don't you slide in i'll tell you the whole story <laughs> Hey, Rom, so so I don't know if you saw this, but you were, okay, so earlier you were mentioning Jay-Z. I'm on the phone with Romney Malco, who's an actor, has been in a bunch of uh, a bunch of projects most recently. I guess people would see you uh, on Weeds, right? No, I, Weeds would think like a man. Would, it depends if they're, I, yeah, know, I yeah. did, yeah, I did, yeah. I saw Think Like a Man, This what was it, uh, April, no, March? March, that was March, and then, no, March. you're right. I saw Weeds happened like, what, uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, so Weeds. What what are you doing tomorrow? I mean, I remember when we were when we were texting last week. You said tomorrow you had to work. You had like a full day. Are oh you, yeah, full day. Just basically. Um, yeah. Are you on another project? I'm doing Tijuana Jackson. He's an ex-convict turned motivational speaker. <laughs> oh my god. He's my brain. You don't believe me? Just go to prisonlogic.tv right now. I promise. What you. is that? You, that you sounds amazing. He's an ex-convict turned motivational speaker, right? <laughs> and so like. Imagine someone really institutionalized trying to tell you how to liberate yourself, how to how to live your dream. He is, I don't look. He is relentless, and it's like too raw. It's just too raw to be you know doing it on the radio. But oh my, give us a little bit. Give us give give me like a little PG version of it. Give me like ten P- seconds. Okay, a PG version of TJ. That's tough. But no, he just, he has like a lot of quotes. Like he'll say things like, um, uh, and then I'm thinking, you've got to bear with me for a second. No worries. I'm thinking. Um, but TJ will say things like, you know, uh, uh, you know, would you believe that one moment is the thing that's preventing you from living your dreams? He goes, one moment has reduced you to somebody wanting a champagne lifestyle with Bud Light pockets. I mean, look, man, <laughs> hey, this is the fact, okay? You know, look, man. Your legacy is not about what you get. It's about what you give. For instance, herpes. I don't want to write talk about that. You know, what I'm saying? You know I, don't, I, I can't think of nothing right now. You know the spot. I'm on the spot, but you, you, you get it. Wait, wait. Or, or, you got me like, coughing over here, man. You know, he'll say, like, a pity party is a shitty party. You heard me? And look, man, life, life is like a, it's like a vending machine, man. It's full of change and, and, and you don't need. So I, I advise you to rethink your snacks. And hey, oh, Rome, he'd be like, Rome wasn't built in the day. That was Utah. <laughs> you know? This sounds amazing, by the way. Man, T. I Water women, Jackson. Man. He's like, I love women, man. Me and my mama, we close, man. We closer than the thighs on Precious. <laughs> <laughs> this this kind of takes me uh, to, uh, remember when Damon, Damon Wayans had his his guy from prison? Remember that character in Living yeah. Color? Like totally, he was like totally. the, the, the intellectual reformed yeah gangster yes. or whatever yes. I, I don't know if yes. he was a gangster but he was, no, he's that militant colon, blah 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 yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes listen let me explain i totally get that but this is here's the deal like i'm finally at the realm of like making my own stuff my goal in this whole game is to be an equal opportunity employer and so what that basically means is that no longer my business model no longer does your 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 um your sexual preference or your gender or your race or your political views, you know, 
you know, take a, can, will they take a toll or impact, you know, the fate of your creativity? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that sounds like a given, but believe it or not, that's not really the case in Hollywood. You know what I mean? So that's the first thing I'm saying. The second thing is, is like, my approach to comedy is completely different in the sense that I don't really want to tell you that I'm telling you a joke. I don't really care if you know or not. I actually get off to the discomfort. And when I do Tijuana Jackson, because of the prosthetics and everything, people don't know it's me. Really? You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, I, like, I definitely like, got to check this out. Yeah, just get, if you go to prisonlogic.tv or just look up TijuanaJackson.com, you'll see, like, you know, he, I, you know, I got this interview that I did with Kevin Hart. You just look at it, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's just the most... I will go to clubs and do TJ. They don't know it's me. It's the most uncomfortable thing. People are squirming and laughing so hard at the same time. Everybody wants to take a picture with T- Tijuana Jackson or TJ after the damn show. I'm telling you. And That's... so, so even though I do hear you about that that thing with TJ, no, that just you... that just what what, what it just where my head went like as yeah. like the the the, the where, what what you dis- described. I was like, oh, I remember. Not it's not it's kind of similar, but not really similar. That's just where my brain went. No, I totally get it. When you see it, you'll be like, you'll see a lot of people in the chat rooms and in the comment box arguing, is, who, is this dude for real? Who is this dude? Oh, Amazing. my God, this dude is inspiring the hell out of me. Oh, that's Romney Malcolm. No, it's not stupid. Romney Malcolm don't have an overbite like that. You know, that kind of <laughs> stuff. So, wait, you go on, so you, you go to, like, you, you work, like, you work, and then I know stand-up comedians say, like, when they go to comedy clubs, it's like they're workshopping. It's like they're working out their jokes. Are you on stage? With this character, TJ, yeah, T- like, Tijuana like Jackson? I, I never I never was a comedian. I actually started doing Tijuana Jackson online. Oh, because, okay. So sorry, yeah. sorry. And then I started doing it in clubs because he, like, HBO really dug him, and they requested him for this series that they had. Amazing. And, like, I did a bunch of stuff for it, and that kind of created a cult following. And then I just started getting calls. People were like, will you come and do 30 minutes? Will you come and do 30 minutes? Wow. So, so I started saying, well, let me start working out some material. And I started doing this stuff live, which I think comedians should do more of. So what I basically did was I did it online first. So I did it on the Internet first and pretty much did, like, a, did a nice job of like, crowdsourcing and then turned that material into the live show. So, you know, a lot of comedians don't like to do stuff to do their workshopping online because they're not in front of a live audience. To me, it makes all the sense in the world. I'm like, when I started workshopping TJ online, I was shooting things like a man. So I'm not going to go on the road for, for what, $100 a weekend or $2,500 a weekend or whatever the hell they pay comedians. I don't know. I've heard all kinds of stories, you know, and, and, and miss out on a movie, you know, on doing a hit movie. So it totally makes sense to me to stay home and workshop online. So okay, so you part of your part of your character's uh, is his material makes fe- people feel uncomfortable. Just this past weekend, I saw Louis C.K. on stage. There was a, a huge festival called Just for Laughs, which normally takes place in Montreal, but we had it here in Toronto. And Louis C.K. is like paramount, like paramount as far as making like touching on subjects and 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 i don't know releasing material that it just makes you feel so uncomfortable but it's so funny uh kevin hart isn't i I don't know if i'd quite put him in that category but he is so funny in your in your opinion who are like the best comedians on in the comedy scene right now you know obviously you know kevin hart is my boy and i don't just say it because he's my boy but i really do think that he is genuinely funny and he's like, really funny like it's it, like what he talks about is so relatable in regards to family yes. and relationships I, I i appreciate that i um, love that i love that about him but there's this, and, and there's this other kid have you ever heard of a guy named anthony jeselnik yeah yeah he used to write for conan Jeez, yeah Jesel, well jeselnik yeah he's definitely in that space where louis ck is with oh. uncomfortable stuff like his tw- some some of his uh, comments on Twitter are really hilarious, but like you make you feel bad for like reading like, ooh, dude, are you serious? <laughs> Jessel Nick is crazy, and Sarah Silverman. I mean, that's right, kind of, of an yeah. obvious, but I really do think she's funny, and um, she, you know, and multi talented too. But yeah, and and also I worked with her a lot, so she. I like Sarah Silverman, man. She's she's really freaking funny all the time. What do you think of uh, Seth MacFarlane uh, hosting the Oscars? It just came out today. Um, Did you know that? You no, know, I kind of, I kind of thought that, I kind of thought that that was already, it was an already a done deal. So, oh, I don't know. Oh, I guess maybe it was made official. Perhaps there's just been okay. rumors before. But what okay. do you think? Um, 
I think it's a dope idea. I, I, I can see that. You know what I mean? Look, here's the deal. I'm extremely removed from those types of events um, because... Do you still watch it, though? It's kind of, it's still a spectacle. Um, I catch the highlights. Oh, really. okay. Right, You right. know, I'm just being honest, and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you why. It's just wherever I can avoid politics, I do, hence moving to Brooklyn. It's really that bad, Rom? I don't know. I don't know. It just from, um, w- there was an event where I was watching, and I, f- I forgot what the occurrence was now, but it was, it was the moment that I pretty much decided, oh, okay, I'm good on this. I don't need to see this again. And that was pretty much it, yeah. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it was, but, you know, it's, it, it, it's weird how, you know, especially with the whole thing. Look, look, okay, I'm just laid out i'm gonna just say it and then let me just go ahead and get in trouble and get off the damn phone okay but basically here's what it boils down to the truth of the matter is is that um in in the world of hollywood 69 to 90 percent of the film is financed from money that comes from overseas oh wow okay 69 and then another then 70 to 90 percent of the the money that's made on the movie is actually made overseas well what markets Oh, Brazil, oh, France, Germany, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So as a result of that, we have to contend with when movies are being made here in America, they're being made to cater to the overseas market. And that's a market that isn't necessarily an English-speaking market. Also, that market... um, that market is going to respond better to action. If, you know, if they're not going to understand the dialogue, they're going to respond better to action. And you know that fast, witty dialogue and comedy that, that America is synonymous for? It just doesn't translate as well overseas. So as a result of that, America makes movies that cater to that country and to other countries, and a lot of times other countries don't respond as well to African-American leads unless it's Denzel Washington or Will Smith. Will, Will Smith you know, I don't know, maybe Halle Berry, I'm not sure. So a lot of times the films that are being made and the films that are being nominated and represented, they don't really reflect or depict anything that are, you know, that, <clears throat> that's relatable. So sometimes, uh, you know, to be quite frank, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm a bit more removed from that scene. I actually tend to watch a lot more independent films. I, end up, I actually tend to watch a lot more cable television. I watch a lot of stuff online in search of good content that I feel I can relate to. Okay, okay, that's fair. So, as a result of that, like these, you know, these, you know, these, the, when, they're, when they're parading, um, um, you know, when, when basically when, you know, when it has to do with that, I'm just, I'm, I'm just honestly not as, as in tune. That's all. I got two more questions for you, then I'll get you out of here. <clears throat> I, don't, <clears throat> I don't know if you saw this, but uh, you, were, you were talking about Jay-Z earlier. Um, yeah. Just... Yesterday, to start his uh, his world tour, uh, Justin Bieber threw up on stage. Like, yeah, I saw he... that on my Tumblr. <laughs> so he, and yes, Facebook. Yeah, so yeah, it's everywhere. And like, yeah. they have it on YouTube, like the actual viz uh, of him throwing up, and he and he, and he said, you know, blame milk. What's the sickest that you've ever been on a set, Romney? Straight up, forget that. Like, okay, on a set, I, I, I've had to do it with food poisoning. Like back when I was a rapper, back when I was, back, back in the day, I was on Virgin Records. I had like a hit record in the country called Victim of the Ghetto. And I literally was like riding in the back of the bus, like throwing up, getting up, running to the bathroom, throwing up, sick as hell, food poisoning. And literally straight to the, sa- straight to the stage, perform like everything's hunky dory and get off. But I've, um, but I've actually had food poisoning when I was on the set as well. That's awful. And food poisoning is awful. It's the, the, it's the most disgusting thing when, like, it's, it, you, your body temperature keeps changing when you're sick. You know what I mean? When you, when, you feel, when you have food poisoning. So, like, you know, they put makeup on you and then you start sweating. Yes. And then you get the chills and then you feel cold for a second. That's pretty messed up. But if you really know how to do your craft, you can just incorporate it into the role. But what if you have to be really funny though? Like you, like, like you're always really funny. So when you feel like crap, it's like it has to affect you a little bit, unless you can channel it somehow and put it in your feet. No, and then you're right. You're... Like, like today is a day that I like literally feel really exhausted. I had a big weekend. I had guests in town. You know what I mean? Um, but and, and and so as a result of that, my brain just doesn't work as well. But usually when I'm working on a set. The, the thing that I can't guarantee myself is uh, 
I can't guarantee myself sleep. So I usually counter that with really strict eating. I just cut out all the things that I know that make my brain foggy. Oh, wow. So what do you eat? Yeah. Just fish? No, just like I just, like, like one time I went on this, um, um, I went on this diet where basically I eliminated uh, sugar. So that meant bread, rice, pasta. Oh, my gosh. Um, you did one of those, huh? No oh. fruit. I didn't eat any fruit. I did this for five years. It was the, I was the biggest for five years I had ever known. But it, it, it actually helped give me this discipline to where, like, if I'm on a job for three months, I can completely eliminate that stuff and be cool on protein and vegetables. And if I need to get a carb, I can, like, just do straight up plain brown rice from time to time. Dude, how much did you weigh? Were you like like 119 pounds, Rom? That's why I'm a crackhead now. <laughs> I, no, it's, it's the truth, Joe. I used to weigh, like, I literally was 171 pounds. I started doing that. I dropped to, like, 155. Yeah. Dude, you just must have been just skinny. And you're not a big dude. Like, you're, like, 5'10". You're, like, pretty slim. You must have just been, like, yeah. like, like Dave Chappelle skinny. No, I'm skinny like I look now because I was much bigger. Not much bigger, but everybody always said that. Oh, excuse me, you lost a lot of weight. Yeah, it's it's weird because now, ever since I did that, and that was that was a while ago. Ever since I did that, now I struggle to like if I don't do anything, I lose weight. I don't gain. You know what I mean? Oh wow! So, like I have to work out to gain weight, and if I if if I'm just traveling and not working out, I just get skinnier and skinnier. Rom, who's the um by virtue of your 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 career and your jobs? Who's the most famous person that you've met being most, an actor? Being an actor. Or, or because, because you're an actor. Okay. Um, um, the I, like, I like to ask my guests that question. We get a, most, a, a, such a varied um, palette of, of responses. It, it's so weird because, like, you know, I met, you know, I worked with Steve Martin on Baby Mama. Very cool. And... You know, I um, I think he's pretty famous, but I think that like Shaquille O'Neal is pretty famous. And then I worked with Tina Fey. Also on Baby um, Mama, about Baby Mama. Uh, also, also Baby Mama, exactly. Um, so I mean, um, who's the most famous person I've ever met? That's a damn good question. Uh, damn, that's a tough one. Hell, if I know, you know, I think Cabby, you might be the most famous person that I ever met. No, I'm I'm the most famous person uh, that you're you're talking on the phone. You've talked to you on the phone for the last forty minutes. Forty minutes. Oh, it's been forty minutes. Look at that. All yeah. right. All righty. Well, listen. Yeah. You're fucking awesome. Hey man, thank you, dude. I, I appreciate, appreciate you, you reaching out. And uh, you just curse. Did you just curse on the radio? Yeah, but no. But we'll cut that part out. Oh, you're editing. Thank God, because dude, I'm tired. So I just gave you a whole bunch. <laughs> thank God. No, no, no man. No, we'll we'll, we'll cut it out. Um, okay, but let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. Um, uh, first, I want to tell you, you know, when I met you, man, it was really clear that you had a very vibrant spirit, dude, and like, you know. Yeah, that was that, the Grey Goose. Yeah, yeah, the Grey Goose. No, no, still, man. And, you know, and that, you know, that type of enthusiasm and that, that, that type of appreciation, that shit is contagious, dude, and, you know, don't lose it. Thank That's you, all. sir. Thank you, Romney. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Okay, so the ne- next thing is going to try to set up this fishing excursion. With you and Mike Richards, and you guys can can geek it out about smallmouth bass and rainbow trout and eels let and you, friggin' me, fishing <laughs> lures and uh, all that stuff. Let me stuff. tell you how crazy I am with the fishing. Okay. My brother said, Rom, I'm getting married. Yeah, I want you to be my best man. I said, I got your bachelor party down, oh, Pat. I got it. Do you know, during my brother's... Um, for my brother's uh, bachelor party, I organized a fishing tournament. Come on. Are you serious? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Your brother must be like, Ram, are you kidding? <laughs> like, I want to go to Vegas and see, like, naked women on stage. What do you mean a fishing excursion? What are you talking about? A fishing tournament. So I, don't have, I don't have a week, Rob. Come on, man. So true, dude. So true. Did you guys actually do that or no? Did you guys go to Vegas? No, we, no, we went to uh, South Florida, Suntec Keys. We got this, got on, got this private island and had some nice cottages. It was, it was six of us, so we all got these nice cottages. Everybody got their own room and whatnot, and we did everything, dude. We, you know, we did everything. We, 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 we had the girls. Nice. Everybody got faded. We, we played <laughs> nice. tennis. We had a fishing tournament. We oh, you did? You worked things. it in. You worked it in yeah. a fishing tournament. Yeah, it, was, it was one of those islands, man. I did. It was one of those islands where, like, they weigh on you hand and foot. So it would be, like, 3.30 in the morning and be like, you know, is there something you need, Mr. Narco? And be like, yeah, 
kind of feel like some great flavored bubblicious right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and they would take the boat and go to land and get it. I didn't make anybody do that, but it would have been, it, I'm telling you, it wouldn't have been a question. They would have uh, flew over there. Man, that's that sounds like a dope spot. I got to get there. No, nah, man, I tell you, like there's a few there's a few places down there in the Florida Keys that really do feel like the Caribbean. And, uh, you know, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to give them away, but yeah, some good ones. Okay, well then, you gotta well, find them on your own. Oh man, well I can. I'm just gonna light up your phone for the next two weeks. Uh, actually, oh, no, one no. of my one of my friends just got engaged. Uh, God bless his heart. Yeah, but he just yeah. got he just got engaged. So in in about uh, eight months, I think we'll start planning his bachelor party. So I might hit you up at that point. Like Rob, man, just give me one of those little spots in the Florida Keys. No, not a problem. Not a problem. You know what's really funny too. I was just looking at the Twitter trending topics, and one of them was like things that you say to a best friend. And I was thinking exactly what you just said. I'm like, dude, I don't think that she's the one for you. Oh, I, if I, you're in love, oh, I support you. Oh, yeah, it's tough. Man. I, I had that conversation with this dude. I was like, I don't yeah. really like your chick. It didn't go so well. But whatever. That's uh, <laughs> a yeah, topic yeah. for another time. Romney Malco, I want to thank you so much for uh, telling some stories and and sharing some of your, your experiences with her. I, I didn't even get to, man, you, at the beginning of this whole conversation, you said you traveled to like nine, you lived rather in like 12 different spots. I didn't even get to that. So I hope that down the line you can come back on and just, and just tell us some, some crazy travel stories. I mean, one, you said the Czech Republic, which is like, what? You must have been no, the only brother in that, that whole. No, no, the Slovak Republic. Definitely. Oh, sorry, Slovak Believe Republic, my not, bad. I was with, you know what, it, 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 my homie Freddie, who's like a big pop star there, like, believe me, their stories don't even get me started on that. Let See, now, that. now I, now I just want to get you on here next week just to tell friggin' <laughs> stories from, uh, from Slovenia or whatever. Oh, my God, you don't even want to know. No, no, no I, I do, no, I, I do like, want to like, know. Like, 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 I really, like, I really have to, oh, no, I'm, I'm shutting up because I don't know what's going to make it to the rest. I'm being quiet now, but <laughs> we'll, we'll talk. I'm going to see you soon. Okay. Trip or something. Okay. For, oh, for sure. Yes, yes. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to uh, read his thoughts on Twitter, it's at Romney Malco, R-O-M-A-N-Y-M-A-L-C-O. And uh, definitely check out, uh, if you YouTube, Tijuana Jackson. That's what was current project, which I, I'm about to spend the next 45 minutes on that YouTube page. Well, what was it? What was it? Prison, sorry, prisonlogic.tv. If you do, if you go to prisonlogic.tv and don't laugh, I'm gonna be surprised. And I and I will I will punch some people in the face if they don't <laughs> laugh. Just watch what happens. All right, watch awesome. Watch what happens. All right. Well, I'm literally gonna spend the next next uh, hour of this afternoon uh, checking it out. So thank you for uh, opening my eyes to that, and thank you very much for joining me, man. Oh, no doubt. You won't want, you won't want to interview me after you see that. You'll, be, you'll do just what, look, look, the people at the 140 conference, um, the people like the founders of Twitter and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're the ones who were like, dude, we need Tijuana Jackson to speak at the 140 conference. Oh, I was like, you, mean, you want me? They're like, no, we want Tijuana Jackson. Oh, uh, that's, hey, have you done it yet? Yeah, dude, it was ridiculous. Oh. Go, go to the channel and see. Okay. Go to the channel and see. All right, dude? I'm on it. Romney, thanks again, man. Much appreciated and appreciate you, dude. Glad you had me, Gabby. All right, take care. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Cabby Presents, the podcast. 